Hi, this is Song Hun Lim from the Department of Orthodontics, College of Dentistry, Joseon University. With my colleagues, I'd like to present a case treated with rotational mandibular setback surgery. This case was shown in the October 2021 issue of the AJU DO. 19-year-old female. She had a mandibular pronotism and mandibular shift to the left. Mandibular dental midline was deviated to the left. Molar relationships were 2.5 and 1.5 mm class 3. Cephalomatic analysis showed normal SNA angle and width suppressor of minus 14.5 mm. Soft tissue AB plane to FH plane was 20 degrees larger than the norm, indicating severe class 3 skeletal pattern. Frankfurt mandibular plane angle was only 14.6 degrees and occlusal plane angle was flat with only 6.5 degrees, indicating hypodivergent pattern. Maxillary incisors were proclined and mandibular incisors were retroclined, indicating anteroposterior dental alveolar compensation to this skeletal class 3. AOA was within normal range. Maxillary arch was 2.5 mm wider on the left side due to the transverse dental alveolar compensation to the 2.5 mm of mandibular shift to the left. Left gonion was also positioned 3.3 mm more laterally. 3D simulation of single jaw surgery for the surgery first approach. Yellow shows distal segment of the mandible. This distal segment was set back and rotated backward. Distal segment was translated to the right. On the submental vertex view, mandibular symmetry was achieved with the control of the yaw. At this ideal position of the mandible, there was overlap of molars. These overlaps were seen as perforations between maxillary and mandibular molars. To remove these premature contacts of molars, distal segment was rotated backward, creating anti-open bite and excessive overjet, like a severe class II open bite. With this backward rotation, setback was increased, facial height was increased, and mandibular plane angle was increased. And surgical stents for angle shaving were designed to reduce square mandibular angles. From this surgical simulation, a CAD CAM splint was fabricated. Pre-surgery and post-surgery. Severe cleft to open bite was formed as intended. Gray shows pre-surgery. Blue shows one week after surgery. Yellow shows surgical simulation. And red shows the result of surgery. Mandibular shift to the right was deficient than the simulation. Mesh deviation measurements showed less than 0.8 mm of error. During surgery, the condyle rotated medially and backward, with lateral and vertical sagging. This occurs mainly by the medial rotation of the proximal segments during adaptation of proximal and distal segments. For maxillary molar dislocation and intrusion, palatal mini implants were placed and then a plate with palatal levers was placed over the platforms of the mini implants. Also, transverse force was applied for transverse decompensation of the maxillary arch poem, thereby reducing the large burkhar object on the left side. Nine months of treatment, open bite was closed and molar intrusion was discontinued. As spaces were developed medial to the maxillary force molars, 
transparator arch was placed on force premolars and dislocation forces were applied. Spaces were closed by the retraction of the anterior teeth, tipping the incisors lingually. Treatment was finished after one year, ten months of treatment. After three years and six months of retention, treatment results were stable. At this time, the patient allowed taking a raw radiation cone beam CT for the present study. Cone beam CT based mother's point position show that anterior posterior decompensation of maxillary incisor inclination was achieved by maxillary total arch dislocation. Maxillary occlusal plane was rotated backward. Maxillary left quadrant was tipped lingually, improving the arch symmetry. Gray shows cone beam CT right after surgery, and blue shows retention cone beam CT. There was severe forward rotation of the mandible, closing the anterior open bite as maxillary molars were intruded during dislocation. Gray shows pretreatment and blue shows retention. Rotational setback of the mandible was achieved, correcting the asymmetry. Soft tissue comparisons. Square mandible became rounded by rotational setback. By the maxillary molar intrusion and incisor extrusion, occlusal plane was rotated 6 degrees backward. Mandibular plane angle increased 12 degrees by this rotation and also by angle shaving and remodeling. The effect of mandibular rotational setback with the orthodontic rotation of maxillary occlusal plane can be called as a double jaw surgery like effect. Because this rotational setback was possible only with double jaw surgery. In low angle patients, Parallel mandibular setback cannot improve the square chin contour. Therefore, rotational setback is needed in low angle prognathism. For the post surgical rotation of the maxillary occlusal plane in case of surgery first approach, class 2 open bite should be established by the surgery, and these class 2 open bites should be corrected during post surgical orthodontic treatment. Conclusions Rotational mandibular setback is needed for low angle mandibular prognathism. Orthodontic rotation of the maxillary occlusal plane can replace the maxillary surgery for posterior impaction, even in surgery forced approach. Thank you.